You're listening to Potty Mouth Radio, the home of movies, music, television, and comedy. And now, the hunt for the perfect album. Hello, patrons, and welcome back to the hunt for the perfect album. I'm nervous about this one. I'm really nervous, in fact, (laughs) because since our first week with Guppy, or and Martha, I guess, this is probably the the first album that I've really, I truly believe this album is perfect. I don't think there's a skippable track on here at all. Uh, So we are talking Our Hearts Beat Out Loud by Math and Physics Club. So... I discovered this band, as I said, they've toured with the Luxmiths. I've seen them live. I saw them perform live with after the Luxmiths broke up. Uh, they had a spin-off band called Last Leaves, which is two of the members of the Luxmiths. And I saw them perform live with these guys. And when I saw them, the bassist came up to me after the show and was like, wow, you were singing along to every single song. And I said, I know. I know every <laughs> song by heart and I fucking love you guys. And he's now my friend on Facebook. <laughs> So I fucking, no pressure. I love Math and Physics Club so much. I don't know how you're going to feel about it. It's very poppy. It's very soft. It's very twee. How did you feel about this album? Look, I'll, I'll, I won't oh. keep you suffering. <laughs> the minute I started playing this, I thought this is like some weird mix of the Luxmiths. Yeah. <laughs> Bell and Sebastian. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. And the Smiths. Like I said, and you I went, cannot I get any more tweets. On, I looked them up on Google and it said, heavily influenced by this, <laughs> the Smiths, Bell and Sebastian, and yep. the Locksmiths. That's the thing. And I was like, yeah. Okay. It's like if Ooh. you took if you took the three <laughs> biggest twee bands on earth and combined them together and made them even more twee, <laughs> that's what you get with Math and Physics Club. <laughs> it's it, 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 no, I, I enjoyed this thoroughly. Oh, the nice. weird thing is, with the exception of probably three tracks, I'm going to find it very hard to tell you the ones that I liked. It all really? kind of runs together. Okay. I've, I've I've listened to the album through four or five times. Probably. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, and I love it from start to finish. There's yep. nothing I don't like. Yeah. But there's nothing that but, really grabs you. There, it, it's all, it's it's kind of like listening to a you know a twenty or thirty minute side of a prog rock album, where it's all good, but there's it doesn't sort of jump and change. There are, as I say, two or three tracks that really jumped out, and I can point a finger at and go, I like that because of this. Everything else, I just kind of like. Yeah, okay. it's all kind of like the Luxmiths. If they had Johnny Marr playing guitar, it's all good. Yeah, it's probably of the stuff you've given me. It's the most consistently enjoyable start to finish of all the albums. Yeah, although Guppy, I would put probably slightly higher because there are more standouts. If that yeah, makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I think for me, when you're so familiar with the genre, like I listen to so much twee. And it's, you know, it's like we said this last week with punk, where I think it's easy for people who aren't into punk to listen to an album and go, when does one track end and the other begin? I t- <laughs> and so I totally get that, that mindset of not being able to differentiate them. For me, I love every fucking track on this album. I think it's I, so I, strong. As do I. And I'm sure... And I'll obviously continue listening to it because I really like it. I'm sure the the more I listen to it, the more they'll start to differentiate and I'll go, oh, yeah. you know, I like this one, I like that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After two, three listens, I've got maybe four tracks that yeah, I could point to and go, I really like that one because of whatever. <laughs> um The others, I just kind of, I know I like them because at no point did I want to skip anything. Yeah. But I couldn't go, oh, well, that's this track. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get that. So uh, we it kicks off with one of the tracks that I do specifically like, which is We Won't Keep Secrets.
It's and it is. It's it's just it's the locksmiths merged with the Smiths. It is, yeah. With a and and all through all of these tracks a very heavy dose of fucking Bell and Sebastian. Yes. I yes. Really that's probably the most <laughs> defining if you like if you're feeling sinister, you'll yeah. fucking love this album. Hundred percent you will. <clears throat> yeah. It sounds I mean this album is like the seaside that was never released with if you're feeling sinister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um in fact, it, 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 a lot of it's to do with his vocals. He's got. I mean, he sounds almost exactly the same. Yeah, really. To me, to, to me, anyway. It's a bit. But, so, Math and Physics Club are a four piece. Um, I think from memory, they only released three albums. Very, very sadly, James, who was the lead guitarist and singer, died of cancer oh. about five, six years ago. Just after I saw Jesus. them leave live, their tour of Australia was actually their their last tour they did. Oh wow! He was very young had two kids very tragic and wow. so math and physics club are no more they kind of decided without james they're just they're not you know they they can't do it so yeah. there are two spin-off bands there's field school and model shop uh the bands have kind of split off into two and i would highly recommend both of them but i agree the vocals on this album yeah they make it, it they're just so sweet <laughs> mm. yeah no, it, it 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 really reminded me of Bell and Sebastian, and that just made me like it. Yeah, <laughs> regardless of what they were saying or what the music was, just the the kind of intonation and everything, I, I liked straight away. Yeah, um, tied to a stone. The second track, I also really really liked. We were drunk on homemade cherry wine. We were young and we had all the time to wild away to wild away. Sinking like it's tied to a stone I've made mistakes but I'm not alone Covered up lies deep in the lines of your eyes Your tired eyes The lyricism I found in this is is, is really good. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It, it's not overly complex but... I like it. I like the um, yeah, the wording that they had in it in in the tracks and and just the the, the feel that yeah. you get out of the songs through the whole album is is just generally really nice. Um, similarly, with "We're Not Lost," the third track, which was good but didn't wow me, but. Long drag the fourth track. Yeah, fucking loved it. Oh my god, you can't help but clap. I'm gonna say, love it, love a song with clapping. Yes. Love it. I Lots used to, I used to sing that as a lullaby to my kids. For some reason, they both <laughs> loved that song. And Noosk was like, "Are they singing about having a drag on a cigarette?" <laughs> like it's multi-layered. It's dra you know, it's drag race. It's dra it's just you know. <laughs> but this, yeah, the, you're right. The the clapping makes oh, that. A, it's um, great. That's Drag, close my eyes and then I lean back And then I lean back and I drop it into drive I'm not the one who shut you out I'm not the one who let you down I am the one who loves you anyhow That is probably, probably the most the musically out. distinct song on the album. I agree. Like if, yeah. if if some of the tracks run together, that's one that very clearly doesn't. Yeah. No, it's it's it, it very much a standout, and probably my favorite on the album. I'd yeah. say that makes sense. Um, I can feel that. It's not my favorite. We'll get to my favorite when we get there. But I do love that right. song. Interesting. Um, the next one, my crooked arms. Um, I like fine, but. Nothing about it kind of wowed me. It's yeah. just pleasant. Um, we didn't run from anyone after that. It was good. I I like it. Um, but then we start getting into things that I probably liked a bit more. Uh, I know it's over. I, I liked a lot. Really, really liked that. Cha 
Put your chain of fools on the radio I wrap my arm around you as we go Everybody thinks they know us But they just don't notice I know it's over And then there's a weird kind of twofer where it didn't matter how many times I played this album, the, the, the next two songs ran together and I kept, I'd listened to the, the, the first one, Thank God I Met You. Which is my favourite track on the album. And li- I, I like it a lot. Then the next track, That's What Love Is, would start. And I'd go, oh, wait a minute. I thought we just listened to this. <laughs> but they're so distinct. That I find them very different. Thank I God I what, Met You it's, is, it's I not think it's anything of, in particular. Yeah, yeah. And it's literally only a, 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 like a millisecond at the start of the song because the rest yeah, of the right. song is, you're right, they're, they're different. There's a millisecond somewhere up the front where I, I yeah, every right. time they played, I would think I've hit repeat. <laughs> Thank God I Met You is not only my favourite song <clears> of this <throat> album. I'm going to make another BDBC here. I think it's one of my favourite songs of all time. I, just, I love wow. I think the lyrics in it are so strong, so evocative. The way that it starts and you think he's <clears> talking <throat> about a romantic relationship and then at the end you realise he's singing to his new child. I, I, it just it breaks my heart every time. I love that song so much. More than one summer to care less lover to did the best they knew Moved like gypsies from city to city And so my loneliness grew So my loneliness grew later double major so much i thought i knew at graduation i stood at the station you were standing there too you were standing there too all these i need to go and listen to it again because i was going to say i think that that's what this is, or that's what love is, is <clears throat> kind of the the superior of the two of them. But I need, I feel like I need to go and listen to. Thank God I met you again yeah. now. Yeah, listen to it again because I think it's <clears throat> one of the strongest pieces of songwriting. You know, and it's one of those things. Like it's very typical. Lots of new fathers write songs about their children. Um, you know, closing time, famously about the birth of his child. Um, I don't know if you're a fan of Stained, but they have a song called Zoe J. But this song I just think is so clever and so sweet and so beautiful. It tells the story of this whole relationship, but really all it leads to is the birth of this kid. And, you know, thank God I met you. I, oh, God, I love it so much. It's all so right, powerful. I go back and listen to it. I can't see how it's going to be better than Matthew and Son by Cat Stevens, but I'll, I'll give it a crack. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, but that said, uh, I think Road Carry Me Home is a beautiful closer for the album. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 genuinely a beautiful song. Um, it's the right tempo to kind of close out an album like this. And it, it was one of my favourites. It's no surprise You always had the bigger dreams Somehow I will so see it's all right, say it all the time, just can't get it to sound right, can't get it to sound right. Road, carry me home. Road, carry me home. Yeah, I, I think... Start to finish, this is probably the, from my point of view, the closest to an an unskippable album that you've given me. 
Yeah. It might not be my favorite album you've given me, but it's probably my second favorite. Um, I'll definitely be listening to it over many times more. Nice. But nice. I think there is not a single down note on this entire album. It's you should definitely check out finish. You should definitely check out both Model Shop and Field School, the kind of spin-off bands after Math and Physics Club ended. Field mm-hmm. School has a bit of a harder edge to it, and Model Shop is just a little bit more polished pop, I think. So you should check them out because I think you'd dig them as oh, well. Definitely. Math and Physics Club sadly only released, I want to say, three full-length albums, maybe four. Um, and they're all good, but this is, to me, a, a perfect album. The others all have at least one or two tracks where you're like, yeah, nah. But I this did read is... a, at least one review of this album that said, oh, Return to Form, the last album had some... Yeah. Did wait on that, that sort of well, because they've been going for a oh, what? It was 2005, I believe, that they released their first album. And this one, I think, wasn't until 2015 or something, I want to say. Um, oh, I'm just looking at a photo of them. They look like the type of music they oh, make. <laughs> they're just fantastic. They're, like I said, when I saw them live and the bassist came up to me after, a dude called Ethan, and he was like, Mate, you were singing along to every. He was so chuffed that I knew all the words to their songs. Like, you know, because they're you very, very. Four indie. albums. Yeah, four. Yep. Okay. There you go. Which is not a lot for 12 years. No, not at all. Not, not at all. And they have some other great songs. There's one on, I believe it's their first album. There's a song called Jimmy, um, Jimmy Had a Polaroid. And that's another great track that I can't help but sing along to every time. Like, I, I love this band, but this album is their peak. Yeah. This one and the first one seem the highest rated. Yeah. No one seems to much like the second album and the last album also fairly highly rated. But what's the second album the called? One. Is the second album I so D O one? Oh, I shouldn't look do. as good as I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. and that's yeah, significantly lower rated than the other three. Yeah. Um, but Live T V four and particularly Math and Physics, the first one. Yeah. Very highly rated, so yep. I'll definitely check them out. Nice. All right. Well, what are you going to give me for next week, mate? Right. So <laughs> we're, as we've mentioned before, we're starting to get to the tricky point where finding an album that you feel has nothing but good tracks yep. that the other person hasn't listened to start to finish is going to start to get harder and harder. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I've got a few, and let me know if there's one that you haven't listened to. Okay. All right. So have you listened to the entirety of It's Not Me, It's You by Lily Allen? I've not listened to the second album. No, I've not. I've not. Because I know know you've listened to the track Fuck You. Yes, as has the rest of the world. (laughs) Exactly. But if you haven't listened to anything else. No, I haven't. No. Then that's it. Okay. Boom. All right. Lock it in, Eddie. What's, what's the album called, sorry? It's called It's Not Me, It's You. It's Not Me, It's You. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm keen. I'm keen. Um, I am very interested to see if you enjoy this. All right. There you go. I've got to start thinking about what to give you next week too. I've got a couple that I'm kind of kicking around. Like I still have some on my list, but I'm like, oh, where to go next? <laughs> <laughs> I'll it's, let Lily Allen it's tell me. tough, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, patrons, for listening. We hope that you're enjoying this series, and we'll catch you next week. Goodbye. Another sad song to sing Another broken heart is aching Another breakup mixtape from a friend When the band begins to play And your cheeks are stained with makeup And you feel as though you really need a friend That's what love is To open up your heart Feel it in your bones You'll know Even 
when it's gone. 